Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Monday. Yay! Monday. I love Mondays. Mondays are the... You know, if there wasn't for Mondays, there wouldn't even be a day. I don't even know what I'm saying. Let's just get right into the news. How about that? Alright, so Fallout 4 does come out at midnight tonight, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure when Fallout actually comes out. I believe it's tonight. Or tomorrow morning, however you want to play it. So... There is a review out there, regardless of when the game comes out. I believe it is tomorrow. I'm almost, po actually, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm just going to stop talking about that because, all right, so, I mean, there's a review out there, all right, from Polygon, and I just had some thoughts on the game. I watched some live streams. I watched Game Boy. I watched stuff already on the game. The game looks, you know, graphically, it looks really good for an open world game like this. And, like, gameplay wise, it looks like the Fallout series has always looked, you know, Fallout 3 and so forth. And it just looked. I don't know, it looks like a decent game. So there's this review out there from, you know, like Polygon. Basically, to start off, it says, it's too big for me to even tell you even a fraction of all there is to say about it. So then I read, read more about this article, and I'm like, all right, cool, you know, maybe the map's huge. So, I mean, you know, there's basically, you got to figure out how to survive or um, whatever. I haven't played Fallout in a while. I can't remember the story too much. But... You know, before the bombs, you know, citizens were able to find vaults, massive, hyper-advanced underground sites, and everything that you need, I guess. And through, I guess, certain circumstances, they sh leave you unelaborated, which, you know, transported 200 years into the future and separated him from his family. I don't know, I can tell you. I didn't really watch the story mode, just in case I were to buy the game, because I might buy this game. It looks really good. I played Fallout New Vegas. Actually, I still have it for my PS3, and I have it on my PC. That game is alright, but I think this game is going to put it over the top. So, you're going to have a special ability that has 10 skills attached to it. It looks really good, and you get better as you progressively go. And I guess, it said, still after a few levels, it felt like much of a simpler way to play Fallout. There's multiple layers and point systems rented in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Fallout 4 gave them less room to focus with any character to determine his build to pursue it. So, I mean, the new system feel skill system seems more in general and more, you know, what you need to know about it and what you want to do to your person so it seems like it's easier than the other skill sets that were in the previous games which is a plus i guess you know i mean crafting you know in fallout 3 was really good so it got a little bit better within this game as well so bethesda you know leverages into a full loot system which resembles like diablo and you know all those types of games and that applies to clothing and armor too which can also be modded as well so, enemy versions of the game can be modded too, I guess. So, I mean, overall, this review, you know, they there's just some key things here. Like, if you guys want to read the whole review, go or I'll put the link in the description. Overall, when I read through this article, basically it brings, you know, gameplay and, like, the open world into one really good, good game. And, I mean, if you guys are a fan of the Fallout series, why not pick it up? And if you're not, maybe rent it and see. Try it out and see what what it has to offer, I guess. I think I, they're going to have mods on the console as well. I think they're going to have mods. I don't know. I can't remember a whole lot of the game. I feel like I'm not. Uh, I don't know. Okay, my final thoughts on final, Fallout 4. I got to play it until to determine my decision. So, from what I've been hearing, though, it seems like it's a really good game and... It got better off Fallout 4, so I mean, that's a plus because I heard Fallout. No, I meant Fallout 3. It got. I, I heard Fallout 3 was really good, and then if this game can top that, it's going to put it over the edge. So then there's performance analysis between the Xbox One P and PS4 version. So I mean, they get stable stars on the Xbox One that aren't necessarily on the PS4, long story short. So Fallout 4 runs at 1080p on the Xbox or PS4 and Xbox One, and a 30 frames per second targeted thing. Um, frames per second is our target. You can clearly see the difference between PC and the console. I'll tell you guys that right now. I mean, consoles, you really can't tell too much. But I guess the 30 frames dips to 20 frames in some sections of the game. So this is what they said on it. Though most locations holds mostly steady at 30 frames per second this is one of the more densely pa uh, packed detailed spots in the game with in terms of overall non-playable character count and geometry layout 
As a result, both PS4 and Xbox One are prone to drops when walking around its center, and Sony's machine consistently gives us a smoother return on overlooking the city as a whole. Xbox One is lagging behind at sustained 25 frames per second in this case, while PS4 delivers at 28 until we leave the scene. There's no question in the sense that the PS4 leverages its raw hardware advantage into a performance lead despite resolutions and assets being identical with Microsoft's platform. Then they continues, it's a glaring hitch downward and matching runs the gates of the Diamond City shows Xbox One drop into a record zero frames per second while PS4 turns the corner at 28. So each ha has their whiffs, but having tested two separate Xbox One and PS4 consoles, the results are always the same across the world at large. We get sizable stutters from Microsoft's console that aren't present on PS4. So, and yes, it does come out tomorrow. It says it right here in the bottom of the article. I didn't read the whole article because I don't really... Alright, so basically what they're saying is PS4 runs better than the Xbox One. PC runs great. That wasn't even between the two. Between the consoles, PS4 runs better at the more intense parts of the game, like more non-playable characters and more, just more going on at one time than the Xbox One. Do I think it's going to occur that it's going to happen a lot? No, because there's probably going to be a patch relatively soon for the Xbox One to fix those frame rate issues because especially if it drops down to zero, the game's going to feel like it froze. Actually, I believe it look, will look like it froze. And there will be a patch and it will run good. Just don't don't worry, guys. Just If you have an Xbox One, don't say, oh my god, I have to go get a PS4 now because it runs better. No, just hold on. There's going to be a patch relatively soon i would hope and think that it would come out soon just don't worry it's all gonna be good fallout 4 is it coming coming out tomorrow we're all gonna have good times okay just calm down it's all right last piece of news here that i want to talk about so you guys remember that xbox one is going to be getting backwards compatibility soon in november starting november 12th by the way going to be Thursday-ish, yep, Thursday, and it's going to be launched with a new Xbox One experience, a major update in console dashboard powered by Windows 10, so, I mean, there's some decent games on this list, but the top games voted by the community are not supported, which include Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Red Dead Redemption, Skyrim, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and Halo Reach. Halo Reach I don't really care about, but the other four, how? How do you, I mean, I know I know it's, it takes them a while to go through and recode the whole thing and re-emulate it, but not Red Dead Redemption and Skyrim, come on, or Modern Warfare 2, those are like the three good ones on that list. I feel like they're just like, oh, screw it, fuck it, we don't need to do it. But there are some good games on there, like Assassin's Creed 2, Mass Effect, Mirror's Edge, and the best Pac-Man game ever made, Pac-Man Championship DX Edition, oh, Edition DX Plus, whatever. So, Microsoft says it will work with publishers to continue to release new titles regular, regularly. We are guessing that this will be on a monthly basis is what they're thinking. So, there's a full list here. I'm just going to go through a couple of them. I read through it a little bit and didn't really... Hmm. Alright, so there's Borderlands, Call of Juarez. Juarez, I think I believe that's what it is. It's going to be Crazy Taxi, Dirt 3, Dirt Showdown, which pretty good. Fallout 3. Surprise Fallout New Vegas isn't on there. Doom, Doom 2, Just Cause 2. Good one right there, too. Halo Spartan Assault, it looks alright. Mass Effect 1. No sports games, really, to be honest with you guys. And then there's Pac-Man. And then they have Plants vs. Zombies. Like, what the frick? Who cares? And then Sonic the Hedgehog, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas and Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Really good game. Super Meat Boy, I believe. I, that's a great game. I have that on my PS4. I mean, they have a lot of them here, but some of them are like, why? Why are you even trying? But, hey, backwards compatibility is good. Sony doesn't want to do it because I believe in PlayStation now, so fuck you, Sony, basically is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, guys, so make sure to like this video, comment, friend, and subscribe. And which games do you want to see on the Xbox One for backwards compatibility? I'd, like, I'd, I'd really like to see them get, like, maybe GTA 4 throwback thursday right uh well, i don't know there's a couple games i'd like to see uh i can't think of any right now i'd like to see maybe assassin's creed uh three because that was a good game bully i'd love to see bully on there but all right guys so like this video i'll see, I'll see you guys tomorrow have a good one all right see ya